very easy for me to pull the ball across the court and get on the outside of the ball here, right? Because Western grip, I need to get my body all the way around here to get on the outside. I can hit the ball both ways. I can hit the ball any way. I can still hit the back of the ball if I want to, but this gives me... What's going on, guys? It's Coach Steven with 15 Points of Tennis. And you've seen my progression, my journey from Western to Eastern Europe back around again. This is pretty much what I've learned on that journey. A couple more complimentary but critical topics covered in part three. Here it is. Like and subscribe if you haven't already and enjoy. Now, not quite as technical, but still very important for you to think about when it comes to grips and grips in general is your grip size. Grip size matters in a big way, okay? Whether your grip is small, I'd say on the four and an eighth to four and a quarter side, that would be small. And the larger side would be four and a half to four and five eighths. So what's the difference here, guys? Well, obviously the small grip, to state the obvious, your fingers wrap around a small grip a little bit more. So you get a little bit more feel with a small grip, okay? You have more dexterity, maneuverability, and agility with the racket head right so you can really car carve that thing like a knife whereas i'm going to over exaggerate here but a, th a thick grip your fingers don't wrap around it now you, you get other benefits as well we're going to talk about but imagine with with a thin grip using like it, it's like a fly swatter right it's you know really light in your hand whereas the racket's actually going to feel a little heavier when with a thick grip I know I'm using two rackets, but just with a thick grip, imagine like a baseball bat. You don't have as much maneuverability, right? Or imagine like you're in Lord of the Rings and you're, you're a dwarf with an axe, right? You're going to have a lot of bludgeoning power, but you're not going to have a lot of maneuverability dexterity. So with the thin grips, I actually like, I like volleying with the thin grips. With the thin grips, because again, you have more maneuverability, you get more racket head speed. So guys, if you like to hit with a lot of wrist lag and and wrist width right here you probably want to use a thin grip if you use a if you actually use a really thick grip and try to get that sucker around it would actually put a ton of stress on your forearm all right so for getting spin and racket speed thin grip the downside with the thin grip is compared to the, th the thicker grip has a lot more bludgeoning power all right the thicker grip the racket is going to feel more stable in your hand and more stable through contact Right? It's going to be slower, but smooth, a little bit smoother. So for baseline bludgeoning, just hitting the ball hard and flat, I like a thicker grip. So I feel like I can, I don't know if you guys watched my video on deflecting versus creating pace. When it comes to a thick grip, I actually like it better for deflecting pace. A thinner grip, I like it better for creating pace. All right, so again, take your pick. They're both good. It doesn't really matter. That, well, it matters some. Okay, it depends, all right? But at least preferentially for myself. What it matters to me a lot more than the grip, because I know that there are pros and cons to both, what matters to me more is, is that the grip feels exactly the same and it's consistent. So I'm someone, believe it or not, guys, I'm not very coordinated. So when you start changing the grip, like a thick grip versus a thin grip, to me, they feel like different rackets almost. And so... If the grip feels thick and I go out, I'm actually it's actually gonna mess up my strike zone a little bit. And now and it'll probably take me like you know five, ten minutes to get my strike zone back. And I have a lot of tips and tricks to help get that strike zone back really, really fast, but that's another day, another video. But it's 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 gonna it's gonna play around with, with my mechanics a little bit, right? When I change up my grip. So when I when I wrap rackets, normally and again, I want the grip to feel very consistent, the same exact every single time. I wrap the, the grip halfway, I, f I feel the grip, and I ask myself, does, does this feel good? Do I like the feeling? Okay, does it feel consistent? Okay, how does it feel in my hand? I, I'll wrap it halfway and just feel that grip. A lot of times, I'll unwrap it, rewrap it again, feel it again before I finish the grip off. Okay, so I, that, that's kind of my pet peeve because grip size does matter, but in your game, again, preferential. And one, one more thing to note, when you buy the racket off the shelf, again, there are a lot more experts in this space than me, but when you, from my experience, when you just buy the racket off the shelf, it's gonna be, it's gonna feel a little, little thicker, obviously. Use it six months later, it's gonna get more compressed. Same with an overgrip. So just be, know and be aware that the grip will feel a little smaller over time. 
I find this rather interesting in terms of your grip and your equipment because I think of it pretty much like what weapon are you going into battle with because it really does change and I have a lot of theories I'll do another video on it but if you're fighting with something light maneuverable and flexible that's going to change your fighting style your playing style for instance as opposed to you can choose a sort of a, a heavier weapon right and it's going to change your play style in, in a different even you're the same person but again thin grip versus a thick grip you will you will notice it changes over time so something worth thinking about at least being aware of with that being said let's jump into the main part of the video and that begs the question guys because one of the most important takeaways from this video is what grip should you be using okay now indisputably when you serve and when you hit volleys you should be in a true continental and what do i mean by true continental you should be again look at the c right here when you hit a continental grip when you serve at the ball just swinging at the ball naturally you should be getting some brush you should be getting some spin all right if you're in a pancake grip, and what I call pancake grip, if you're forehand eastern or anywhere over on this side of the spectrum, you're in a pancake grip. If you're in a pancake grip and you just swing naturally at the ball and you're hitting the ball flat and there's no spin, there's no brush, you're in a pancake grip. The problem with a pancake grip is, look, if you're a beginner, intermediate, okay, you can get away with it. It actually looks pretty good. You can hit the ball pretty flush and square. But when, once you start playing better players, you see a lot of the young kids, eight years old, nine years old, 10 years old, pancake grip is okay. Once you get to slightly higher level, again, that ball coming straight like this, it, man, it's, it's easy to just tee off on that ball. Compared to if you have a little bit of movement on the ball, all right, and you can bring the ball down. So you've gotta be in that, that continental grip. And look guys, here's the issue. We talked about breaking your wrist the whole video. With a continental grip, with a pancake grip, Let's say I meet the ball here. If I want to brush to the, if I want to brush, pronate up and brush to the ball, what happens to my wrist if I'm in a pancake grip? To, to, to pronate for spin, my wrist will break. To pronate for a slice, my wrist will break. You see how it's broken? Position of weakness. All right, you don't want to break your wrist. In a continental grip, again, I can pronate for spin here. See how the wrist doesn't break here? I, I can brush the back of the ball or hit the, hit the outside of the ball without my wrist, without my wrist breaking. That's a big difference. And same thing with the volley guys, using a pancake grip versus a true continental. Again, you need to be in a true continental for a volley. There's this one dude I used to play with back in the day when we were really young. I used to call him the net grinder. He loved to come to the net, he was very athletic, but he volleyed with a pancake grip. And while it can look nice in 3 0 doubles, 3 5 doubles, 4 0 doubles, okay, when you're just getting started, you can hit the ball clean and flush and square. The problem with, with this guy would come to the net, every volley he hit, and look at the strike zone bing, 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 bing. Every time he volleyed, the ball would pop up and go right back to the opponent flat. And he tried to, he tried to literally grind out a net, and obviously that's not a bad, that's not a good strategy when you come to the net because it's close combat. I'd pass him like that, right? But he couldn't angle the ball off because he wasn't in the continental grip. Let me show you, okay? In, in, that, in that pancake, it always goes back to the opponent. If I were to try to hit the outside of the ball on, on a forehand volley, what happens to my wrist? When I hit the outside of the ball on a forehand volley, in a pancake grip, my wrist breaks. I can't angle the ball off. If I want to be able to put angle the ball off on both sides and put the ball away, Again, I, this kind of grip, I can hit the outside of the ball and go pop. Now to demo this for you guys to test for what I call a true continental grip, you should be able to do this. And again, getting angle when you're playing points, singles, or doubles, you gotta be able to put the ball away. I should be moving this way and be able to flick the ball here without, without breaking my wrist. See, without breaking my wrist, I can hit the ball both ways. I can hit the ball any way. I can still hit the back of the ball if I want to, but this gives me the ability to, to angle without breaking the wrist. All right, so that's urban volley. Ground strokes, ground strokes is really up to you guys. How do you want to play the game? How do you love to play the game? What style do you resonate with? Et cetera, et cetera. But I would say this, 
if you're six foot nine, probably not a great idea to use Western grip just because in terms of the opportunities you're getting, if you're six nine with a Western grip, how, how, are, how well are you gonna really utilize the hammer shot above the head, right? And vice versa with a really short guy. Like I know, look, the, the, the younger kids, especially who compete at a high level because they're short and gravity is bouncing the ball over their head, they like to use those big Western grips because it's very comfortable for them up here. Okay, very comfortable. I understand that. But from a developmental standpoint, okay, just as a coach and what I've seen, I prefer actually the kids to use anywhere from an Eastern to more of a semi-Western. And why is that? Remember we talked, we, we discussed in the beginning the palm facing the sky for a Western grip at contact versus the palm facing the target. Well, a lot of times when the palm is facing the sky, with the, the kids kind of start to pull off the ball. It's a little less intuitive to hit the back of the ball, sorry, back of the ball, outside of the ball, back of the ball, outside of the ball. Whereas when the palm is facing the target, it's like boop, like hit, like tapping a balloon, boop, boop, boop. It's a little bit more intuitive. In my opinion, a little easier for the wrist coordination and to keep the strings on the ball. I know we talked about, you know, one, two, three. You know, as compared to one, two, three, right? In that last video on fixing your aim, it's a little bit more intuitive. So from a developmental standpoint, Eastern grip to semi-Western grip. And you can always move to Western grip later, you know, once your fundamentals are down, okay? Now, choosing a grip, look guys, anywhere on the spectrum is good. I just say be practical with it. Most times on the Pro Tour, Rarely do you see the extremes, right? Few times we see continental grips nowadays because just, again, the limiting factor. And very rarely do you see extreme Western because of the limiting factor. So I'd say if you're in the range from Eastern to Western, you're doing pretty darn good. But again, make sure you know the changes in mechanics so you can utilize it. You're swinging the best, put yourself in the best situations to win, hit the best, get the best result out of your game as you can. Before we wrap this series, a cautionary tale about injury. When I switched from an, a Western grip to an Eastern grip, and as we talked about in that first part, it changes the muscle allocation in which you use. And I know my strike zone was off when I changed. I didn't know a whole lot when I was young, but I actually injured my wrist. It put me out for a little bit. I know someone who, with even with good technique, who knew what uh, he was doing at the time, went from an Eastern grip to more of a Western grip, and that kind of upper forearm bicep part was sore for a little bit and you know in my case it was a slight injury in his case is just muscle soreness but just know what to expect when you go in and sometimes it actually might take a little bit of strengthening and to start slow i don't know if you guys know like steph curry when he changed his shot when he was young his dad made him shoot two footers again for a whole summer essentially and before he slowly shot further and further and further. Now he's an unbelievable distance shooter. But sometimes you might have to baby step it because you, your strength might not be at the level to execute when you change your mechanics. Now the student you see in this video uses a semi-Western grip on a day-to-day -day basis. I bet a lot of coaches would vouch for semi-Western because again in all these videos I talk about the two ends of the spectrum which is like an extreme Eastern and an extreme Western. But semi-Western the properties fall somewhere in the middle and you have a lot of versatility with low ball, high ball, etc. Now, um, as we're, we've been going through these videos, I've also been showing you the side-by-side -side comparisons of using a slightly more western grip and slightly more eastern grip. And there was a time, the, the student you see here, we experimented with his forehand on, on both ends of the spectrum. And my recommendation is you don't just try grips unless you're seriously considering switching. But one thing I know when you try grips, it it kind of tinkers with your swing a little bit. Even for me, and I mentioned this before, and I'll mention it again, I'm not super coordinated. The student you see in this video, number one, his fundamentals are super, super solid, at least on the forehand side. And he has good coordination and he knows the strike zone. And even he went through when he was transitioning to different grips, went through an, an, a time when he's very frustrated. So use caution and some reasonability when you're experimenting with this and just don't do it for the sake of doing it. We're gonna wrap the video there guys. I appreciate you guys, thanks so much. I know this was a slightly longer one and I'll probably mix it with longer, shorter, but you know, these days I know, look, a lot of 
the, especially in our, our society today, everything comes in sound bites. It's short. It's snappy, right? And yeah, I can deliver, deliver the information to you in a short and snappy way. But I don't think you'd be able to get the depth. Again, you know, some of these concepts have taken me, like this one, it's taken me years to figure out. I know, right? Maybe I'm not that smart. It's taken me years to figure out. I'm trying to condense it for you in 20, 30, 35 minutes, etc. So if you really want to be able to master and get some of these more complex topics, it's just my opinion, you've got to be able to go deep and really drill down deep and really think about these and how they apply to your game and analyze it from every angle, all right? So that wraps up today's video. Thank you so much, and we'll see you on the next one.